In this video, I'm gonna walk through your super common question I've been getting lately, how to know if you can merchant fulfill a specific product you're analyzing to potentially sell on Amazon this Q4. We're gonna walk through my exact method, thought process, as well as specific FBM tips and tricks to help you maximize your sales and profits this Q4 in December. Also wanna mention now is the perfect time to apply for my coach program if you're interested in working directly with me to scale up for Q4. I'm gonna leave the application link in the description. Let's get right into the video. I'm gonna walk you guys through how you can use Keepa and Selleramp to analyze whether or not or how FBMable a certain product is. So how we start, so you literally just need Selleramp and Keepa to do this 20 bucks a month each. Right there, we can see this product page on Amazon. So right off the bat, instantly I take a look at who's in the, currently in the buy box to decide whether or not I can get sales FBM. So we can see this seller that's currently in the buy box, we can see it ships from the seller, it doesn't ship from Amazon. So we know there's a good chance this is FBM friendly because other people are getting the buy box FBM. Also, I move my offer summary up on seller so I can easily see it. So as long as like 25% plus of the sellers are FBM, that also helps the argument. If there were 42 offers on this listing and, and 39 of them were FBA, there's a very small chance we'll be able to get the buy box FBM, especially not in December, but we can see uh, over 25% plus. And now what we want to do is scroll down here on Keepa and we can see that the price on this is pretty stable, right? So we know people are making money. And what I want to do is go here, data, and then buy box statistics here. And now what I want to do is look at this column, which is the FBA and FBM column. And we want to see how many of these sellers and what percentage of them are getting sales FBM. So the buy box statistics is awesome to know like what to price your items at. So you can filter here. But what I like to do in this case is filter and see what percentage of the buy box is going to the sellers that don't have the prime checkbox, right? So that means in this case, there's like probably right around like 50% plus of the 30 day buy box share, which is very correlated to sales, are FBM sellers that are getting sales on this item. So there's a good chance this item is FBM friendly because we can see a lot of other people are getting sales FBM on this. We can also see delivery dates are a big thing. Um, so we can see I'm filming this on October 20th. This seller in the buy box has delivery dates that are really good. We can see, I bet you these guys that aren't in the buy box have delivery dates that are way further back. Yeah, so we can see Thursday, November 9th. So of course this seller isn't getting the buy box right there so it makes perfect sense and then just cut that little part out lens so the big thing is you want to be looking at the buy box statistics and seeing if other people are getting sales fbm on that product to decide if you can let's take a look at another example okay so this item right we can see right here right off the bat we can see there is an fba seller in the buy box with fantastic delivery dates we can see yeah sunday october 22nd so this is clearly a prime seller right there and then what we want to do in this case is we can see a little bit lower percentage and higher offer count overall of FBM sellers on this listing, 42K rank, right? But now the buy box statistics is going to verify this for us, right? So we want to come down here, hit data, and then buy box stats right here. And we can see that there's a lot less FBM buy box share going down, really only right in like the 5% range right here, which is a lot lower. So there's a good chance that at least in the short term, this product is not going to be very FBMable, even though it doesn't weigh a lot, which makes it super efficient. If something is above 25 bucks, but below one pound, it makes it very economically feasible to FBM and obviously FBA too. The costs are very similar, but it, Specifically stuff like this is very good to FBM. The problem is we can see on a 30-day basis This is not very FBMable just looking at the data that keep on selling and provide see over like a 30 day Let's see over like the 180 day. Yes, yeah, so it's like we're talking like close to like, you know 10 12 percent 15 percent right there But still not very FBMable, FBMable right here and especially not in October now during December pretty much everything is FBMable But the buy box stats are really going to help you decipher whether or not you're going to be able to get FBM buy box share Okay, third example right here. We can see um, 45 offer 16 by FBM, which is pretty bullish um, Seller in the buy box currently is FBA right there and then all we want to do in this case is hop to the buy box stats and take a look right here and then by the way stick around to the end of this video and i'm going to show you like a super really really efficient sourcing method to use to find products to fbm that is like so foolproof and so effective and i don't see anyone talking about it okay so we can see right here if we go here fba we can see um probably right in like the 20 25 percent range um, FBM friendly right here and especially one seller really high price getting a ton of the buy box share Whereas so this is the kind of thing I would feel comfortable testing FBM 
Overall, what probably makes the most sense is testing pretty much everything FBM with good handling time, which I'm going to talk about a couple um, FBM tips here specifically in a sec. But we can see in this case, um, this is probably FBMable as we can see other people are doing it and you know you probably could too on a listing like this. And it just basically taking a look at the buy box stats and deciphering, uh, you know, making sure there's adequate FBM buy box share that's going to these sellers. Okay, let's talk about some other tips for sourcing items to FBM, right? So if you can do Nike outlets or just general retail arbitrage or hybrid arbitrage, which is placing pickup orders, so sourcing online arbitrage and then seeing that that website had stock online and listing it same day FBM and potentially selling stuff same day FBM, that makes the learning curve incredibly quick. So that's incredibly advantageous, right? And sourcing for FBM means you can test lighter because you don't need a bunch of products to ship in bulk and looking at what other sellers are doing can teach you a lot, right? Now, there's gonna be a lot of anti-FBM propaganda on the internet. Do not listen to it. When everything is dialed in, especially during December, it is so easy to get the buy box FBM and you can buy stuff today, list it really quick, and great progress can be made in a short amount of time. A lot of you guys saw people killing it, like a lot of those student interviews I was filming during August, a lot of that was due to FBM and I want that same success for you. Right here, okay. Uh, make sure to screenshot this tab right here. This is FBM shipping costs right here. This is very important. Um, this is what you're gonna plug into the FBM calculator on Selleramp, which you're gonna access by going here, right? And then scrolling down on Selleramp and then toggling over FBM right here, looking at the dimensions up here and then plugging in that specific weight. So for this case, it'd be like probably like 350, four bucks, depending on where it's going right there. So that's where you plug in the FBM cost in on Selleramp. Right here, so uh, below one pound, mainly USPS, above one pound, mainly UPS, you're gonna buy whatever's cheapest on Amazon. Um, sometimes USPS ground advantage above one pound is really good too. FBA and FBM typically cost the same, so don't really wor worry about the profit. Occasionally it can be a little bit different, but um, they're very, very similar costs. So you take a screenshot of this, don't overthink it guys, this is general estimates of FBM shipping costs right here. Occasionally if Amazon shows a lot higher, you're gonna buy shipping via pirate ship and it'll be one of these costs right here. Other things to keep in mind for Q4 FBM, do not expect to make sales consistently FBM prior to December unless you were in zero day handling time and using a repricer. I'm gonna leave the link down below in the description. I have a $600 giveaway going on with BQL, which is my favorite repricer. You can check the BQL tutorial I posted yesterday. It's also linked in the description for details on how to that, enter that. I would really recommend checking that out. And as we get closer to December, more and more items become FBM friendly because FBA competition drops off because you shouldn't be FBMing stuff after December 1st. Most don't deviate focus and don't actually, most deviate focus and don't actually go hard. They want to worry about selling toys. Just focus on what you do right now and finding those good opportunities. The best data is going to be your own anecdotal data, right? Listing something for 48 hours and seeing what happens is going to be the best way to test something FBM. The nice thing is that if it's good to FBM, it's probably good to FBA too, so you can really easily, if it doesn't sell FBM, just send an FBA. But during December, it's going to be so easy to get stuff in. And delivery dates are the primary driver of buy box share, like I showed you guys looking at the delivery dates on stuff. In December, the lack of prime delivery dates creates all the FBM opportunity for us right here. Okay, so one really, really good sourcing method for FBM products is taking a look at the storefronts of other sellers that crushed FBM last year. To show you how to do that right here, we have this listing, right? So if you go to the Keepa here and go to the one year, we can see, uh, my bad, the one year, we can see this product performed incredibly well last year on Keepa. It went from like 42, 50 bucks all the way up to like 70 bucks right here and utilizing the buy box stats like I showed you guys. So we just go here, data right here and then buy box stats, 365, and then filter to see who sold at the most expensive prices, right? So we just go to the 365 day data and then uh, filter to who sold these products at the most expensive prices because these are the really smart people that did really, really well last year and sold at the peak. So those are probably the same people I'm gonna do stuff this year and then all you gotta do is look at when they won it, right? Which we can see for a lot of these, specifically is in like, you know, 12, 12 uh, and we'd see this product actually went to the moon again right here, but typically they only go to the moon during December. So what you want to do is you could do, even the people who ate on it, um, like, you know, six months ago when the price went up, but specifically a lot of like the 10 months ago, nine months ago that we can see November, December, those types of sellers. And then you can just go ahead and open up their storefronts right here and take a look within Keepa and then find those people on Selleram and storefront stock and take a look at what products they sold last year. It's a really good idea to save some storefronts in like a spreadsheet 
and then come back and take a look at them in December because right now, these are the sellers that are really smart and preparing well for Q4. So they did really well with it last year. So there's a good chance they're gonna do well this year again and you just click the sellers and open them up and then you can take a look at exactly what they're selling. So whenever you see something that did really well last year, don't necessarily speculate on it. What you do wanna do is scroll down here and one click export this to a seller and spreadsheet right there so you can access these ASINs in the future, source them during Black Friday, Cyber Monday, right there. But you do also wanna utilize this data and be able to storefront stock the people that took really good advantage of it last year in the buy box stats. That same thing goes true for any types of like Halloween, Thanksgiving, back to school items in the future. This is such a good way to do things because you can leverage the Keepa data to see who did really well on this product last year, Take a look at this stuff this year. So uh, if you haven't gotten the repricer set up, check out the BQL giveaway. If you got any questions about this, let me know, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks a lot.